A reliable and good weapon for the early game, the Varmint Rifle is something almost everyone will use at some point in Fallout New Vegas as it's a weapon given to you directly in the tutorial. That's why today I wanted to ask if you can beat Fallout New Vegas with only a Varmint Rifle. To start with, I named myself something fitting for this run as I would essentially be Sunny Smiles for the entire playthrough. I stole all the shit that I could find in Doc Mitchell's house and headed over to the Vigor Tester machine so that I could assign my specials, focusing mostly on intelligence, agility, and luck. I picked my tag skills as guns, medicine, and speech, picked skilled and trigger discipline for my traits this time around, and headed out into Good Springs. Unlike last time, I could actually do things while I was here, so my first stop was the saloon so that I could talk to Sunny Smiles and do the tutorial, as she would award you with a varmint rifle right at the beginning of it, which is perfect for me as I could do the entire run now. I stopped by Chet to do some bartering, went and offed Joe Cobb, since I thought I'd do Ghost Town Gunfight while I was here as I haven't done it in a was off to talk to Ringo since he wanted me to gather some help to take on the Powder Gangers, and the first stop for that was talking to Sunny again since she would instantly join the both of us. I also managed to convince Trudy while I was in the saloon. I couldn't convince really anyone else since I didn't have enough points to pass any of the other skill checks. I also for some reason decided to stop in the schoolhouse and start killing the insects inside. I'm still not really sure why I did that. Back to Ringo, and we started the battle with the Powder Gangers, who went down about as easy as you'd expect for a level 1 quest using the Varmint Rifle. I thought about going the quick way to the strip this time, but decided against it and thought that I would just head on over to Prim to start clearing out some of the convicts there. This was actually a lot more difficult than I was anticipating early on, as I didn't think that I was going to have this many issues with the convicts here. Also, for some reason, one of them spawned with a goddamn plasma rifle, which kind of startled me a little bit, and it actually ended up making me waste more medical supplies than I was really ready for. While I was in the neighborhood, I went ahead and popped into the Bison Steve Hotel to clear out the convicts inside for some easy experience points early on. This wasn't too bad when I first arrived, but it got more annoying as I progressed on because I wasn't expecting the convict leader to actually pose as much of a threat as he did, and I actually ended up dying here for the first time this run, which kind of surprised me. The second time around, it went a lot easier as I took him out first so that I wouldn't have to deal with him. It seems Deputy Beagle got caught in the crossfire as he was nowhere to be found after all the shooting had ended. So with that done, I decided that I was just going to head off to Mojave Outpost so that I could do some quests there for some more quick and easy experience, as well as hopefully get some ammo as by this point I was completely out. Lucky for me, there was a uh, traveling merchant that was selling a good amount of 556 ammo, so I got the quest from Ranger Jackson to go kill some bugs, and with that out of the way, as the ants were not challenging whatsoever, they're ants, I went back up to Ranger Jackson and turned it in, and this was actually extremely good as it gave me a whopping 72 armor piercing rounds for the varmint rifle, which I was very happy for. So I decided to test it out on some scorpions on my way to Nipton, as well as some jackals that had gotten in my way and I wanted their shit to sell for later. Arriving in Nipton, I said hello to Oliver Swanick, as everyone should in every playthrough of Fallout, decided that I was going to off Volpace while I was here so that I couldn't do it in the strip later, as well as any of the other Legion members that decided to get in my way, which was actually pretty annoying. Thank god for that armor piercing rounds, because I don't think I would have made it otherwise. I found another traveling merchant that was selling some more 556 ammo, so I picked it up, killed a couple more legionaries that were in my way as they were going to kill the traveling merchants, and I didn't want that. I also ended up killing a legion caravan, which I'm pretty sure is from a mod, as I don't remember the legionaries ever traveling with pack brahmin or anything. So back off on my adventure, I stopped by Novak to barter with Cliff for some 556 ammo, which I was pretty content with as I think I had enough to last the rest of the way to the strip. I got assaulted by some mole rats and immediately went to the gunrunners, because of course I did. I always stop by the gunrunners. I love the gunrunners, and they actually did have a good amount of ammo for me to buy, so I did. I also picked up a scope while I was there, which I promptly tested out on old Ben, and the Securitrons. Normally I don't kill the Securitrons to get into the strip, but well, I had armor piercing rounds and I figured I should use Use them. I took a different approach with Benny once inside the strip this time as I figured I would mix things up a lot this playthrough so I killed him in his sleep, went off to deliver the platinum chip to Mr. House who thanked me by making me sit through his long boring ass showcase of the Securitron upgrades. Which again, just fantastic, I love sitting through that. So I thanked Mr. House for making me sit through that by murdering him. 
I actually didn't take any damage getting into Mr. House's elevator, which was surprising, so I showed him my thanks by quickscoping him. Went off to kill the kings, as I would be siding with the NCR this run, and I didn't feel like doing the king's quest line right now, so I just went ahead and murdered them all. The uh, hollow point rounds came in very handy here, as the kings don't have armor, really, so the hollow point rounds just do extra damage. Once that was done, I got ambushed by some fiends on the way to deal with the boomers, so I shot them in the head with more armor piercing rounds, as a lot of them had armor for some reason, which is also weird. On my way to the boomers, I made sure that George died. I offed Pearl in her sleep, as well as killing any of the other boomers that had gotten in my way. Mostly just wanted to do it so that I could kill Raquel, as she has a almost mint condition suit of combat armor that I would take for myself. Back to Ambassador Crocker, I let him know that I was already done with both the boomers and the kings, which helped me speed along that quest pretty well. Once that was done, he told me to go off to Hoover Dam. But before I got there, I decided that I was going to stop by Boulder City, which I normally don't do in these runs, as there's not really a whole lot here for me to do. Inside, I just went ahead and started offing the Great Cons, as I wanted the experience points and the stuff that they had so that I could sell it later. I tried to resolve the situation diplomatically, as always, but it didn't go according to plan. Once I was at Hoover Dam, speaking of the Great Cons, Colonel Moore wanted me to go kill more of them, but not before I stopped by Quartermaster Barden and was absolutely shell-shocked at the amount of 556 ammo that he had. Back in Good Springs, I watched a super mutant fight a puppy and a large rad scorpion, which was kind of weird. I decided I was going to take the quick way to Red Rock Canyon, so I started clearing out the Cazadors, which was pretty annoying, as even with hollow point rounds, they still took a lot of rounds to go down. And keep in mind, I'm not playing on hard or anything, so it was actually quite surprising that they took that many bullets to go down. It was about five or six shots each. I killed a family of Bighorners on my way to Red Rock Canyon just so that I could let them know where I stood. Once there, I abused the night vision scope that I had picked up earlier from the Gunrunners, which was actually a solid move here as I could just get a lot of sneak attack crits on most of the great cons. In the Longhouse, it was actually a lot more difficult than I was expecting. I got lit up pretty good in here and nearly died, but once the screaming was over and all the bodies had hit the floor, I picked up as much loot as I could carry, went back to Cassandra to talk to her about the next step in the quest, which was dealing with the Omertas. And we all know how I love diplomatically dealing with the Omertas. Yeah, no, all of them got 556 five, rounds to the head, mostly using hollow points again, as the Omertas, like the Kings, don't have a whole lot in the way of armor. The Omertas went down in anywhere from 1 to 3 bullets each, which made them all pretty simple to deal with. Once that was done, I headed back to Hoover Dam to talk to Cassandra again, and it was time for my favorite part of any run, dealing with the Brotherhood. Just like Benny, I decided that I was going to take a different route with the Brotherhood this time, and by take a different route with the Brotherhood this time, I meant that I didn't just slaughter them on sight, and I actually tried to do things diplomatically here. Yeah, by diplomatically, I mean that I talked to the Ranger, and instead of just shooting him, as it wasn't in good taste since I was working with the NCR, and I didn't kill the Brotherhood on sight, I decided that I was just going to steal all the keycards, and set the bunker to explode. I could have easily dealt with the Brotherhood since I did have a good amount of ammo, I just don't want to do the same thing run after run, so I blew up the bunker. Once that was done, I headed back to Hoover Dam, and it was time to assist the Rangers in keeping President Kimball alive during his speech. I stole the detonator off the Engineer and immediately presented that to Ranger Grant, which caused Kimball to get scrambled and leave the speech a little early, which was fine by me, that was just less hassle for me to go through. After that, I talked to Cassandra one more time, and she told me to go talk to General Oliver, who just wanted to bitch at me. Once that was done, I started the second battle of Hoover Dam by immediately getting stuck in a room with a whole bunch of Legionnaires. I literally spawned into all of them, so I ran, just tried to kite them around and use the armor piercing rounds to kill them. This worked up until it didn't. I actually died because I forgot to re-equip my armor after dealing with the Brotherhood when they strip you of your items. Outside was more of the same, just using the armor piercing rounds on the Centurions to clear them out so that I could progress further into the area. The Legate's camp was fairly standard, it was just clearing out the guards that were there, which wasn't too bad as I did have quite a bit of armor piercing rounds and mostly everything was going normal until I decided that I was just going to try to take on the Legate without talking to him and getting him to fight me on his own, which was a terrible idea. This ended with me dealing with 
probably 20 or 25 legionaries at a time, which was annoying. All of them were shooting me or fisting me or whatever, but once I had finally killed the last guard after about 15 minutes of walking around in circles and spending nearly 100 armor piercing rounds, Oliver arrived and with that I beat Fallout New Vegas with only a varmint rifle. As always, please leave suggestions in the comments below. I appreciate you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.